and welcome to the channel. I am Robin from Rover Devil FPV and this is the Eugene Tyro 109 which has been provided by me by Banggood. This quad comes as a kit but I want to run with you through the specs first. At first the frame. It has a nice look to it and feels really rigid thanks to the 8mm wide arms and 5mm thick. The true X frame measures 210 millimeters from motor to motor, and on the bottom I use battery plate to protect the battery from these screws. That's not a surface you want to strap a lipo to, and you can't really fit a battery mat to that. The motors are smooth running. 2206 and 2400 kV. The motor should be 5 fs capable as is the rest of the electronics. If we take a look at the stack we see a 30 amp BLLES ESC, the Rubicon capacitor on the back, F4 flight controller with Betaflight 3.5 flash to it. On the top is the same VTX from the EG the Wizard S with pit mode all the way up to 600 mW, which does support smart audio, but weirdly enough, the required cable isn't included, so you need to source your own. Everything is held together with plastic screws and dampened spacers. On the front is a Cadex EOS 2 1200 TV line with a 4x3 aspect ratio, and on the back is a Pagoda antenna. And Inchine provides you with one set of Four blade props. Now let's cut back and see how I built it. And I must say the Eagle Eye viewer will see that it has been built in different timelines because I rebuilt it because I wasn't happy with the way I built it the first time. These are all the parts you get in the box and these are all the screws sorted. So let's get started with the build. We begin by laying out the bottom of the frame, slide the heat shrink over the arms because you will not be able to do this after the frame is built. The arms go with a curved uh, side facing the front and rear of the quad. I recommend you use the longest plastic screws to help position the frame. They go through the middle holes on the bottom X shape. Then place the arms and the top plate. The 12mm screws go in the press nuts in the inner holes and the 16mm screws are locked with a nut on the outer holes. If you wish you can use Loctite on steel screws to secure them down. Now the bottom frame is done. Here I take the hard plastic spacers and put them over the plastic screws and place the ESC on the frame. But I recommend you doing this after uh, placing the motors and pre -tinning. We use the 8mm screws to secure the motors to the arms, 3 screws each, and we run the wires through the heat shrink. Now take the ESC and pre tin the solar pads. This will make soldering the wires much more easy. We pre tin the positive and ground and then all the motor pads. We solder the black wire to the ground and red to the positive.
then place the ESC in the frame. If you like your motor wire from the outside, you can solder them now. I am running one wire in front of the stack and two over the ESC. Coming from the inside, I recommend you place the side of the pod first. This will reduce the chance of pinching your wires, because this frame is very tight. You cannot run the motor wires under your ESC, but if you do, your LiPo strap won't fit. But to make sure we don't pinch wires, we install one side of the pod first. We use 6mm screws to connect the side plate with the aluminium, and the same screws are used to screw the side to the bottom of the frame. We strip the wires and pre-tin them, so we can make an easy solder joint. Then we solder the motor wires to the ESC. Don't worry about cr crossing the wires, that will be set up in Beale Alley. When two motors on the same side of the quad are done, we unscrew the sidewall and copy this on the other side. Now we can go on with our build and have all the space we need. Now we go on to prepare the flight controller. It's supposed to be plug and play, but we have to solder three things here. The gamma voltage going through the plug is 10 volts, but the Cadex EOS 2 works on 3.3 to 6 volts. So we will solder the red wire from the cam here on the top side of the flight controller. I'm using an Eversky uh, transmitter, so I will be using SBUS. That means I will have to bridge these two pads. If you have a spare wire for smart audio, we will also pre-tin the TX5 pad. Snip the connector off and prepare it for soldering. We solder it to the 5 volt pad we pretend earlier. On the VDX we see an empty space on the plug labeled data. We will use this for smart audio and we will connect our wire here. This wire does not come with a kit, so you need to source it yourself. We will solder the other end to the TX5 on the flight controller. This will be a good time to prepare the receiver as well. I am using the black connector on this build, but it takes quite a lot of space, so I recommend you snip it off and direct solder it to your receiver. This is all soldering done. So now we will continue installing the flight controller. First I update the firmware and immediately bind it to my Terranus. Plug the camera in on the top, VDX on the left, and the receiver on the back. Then we use the rubber dampened spacers on top of the ESC and place the flight controller with the arrow facing forward. Use the remaining spacers on top of the flight controller, place the VDX on top and use the plastic nuts to secure the stack. Now we will mount a sidewall but don't fully tighten it just yet. We use a tiny screw to mount the camera. We screw the antenna mount using 60mm screw and then mount the other side. Secure the camera and antenna holder. Mount the lead from the VDX to the antenna holder. 
finish the frame mounting the top plates with the 4mm screws. And now is a good time to go by all your screws and tighten them down. Then it's a matter of placing the antenna. Secure your receiver antennas and heat shrink the arms. Congratulations, you built an Ishin Tyro 109. How do I look back at this build? It's not very difficult to do, but it's also not as easy as Ishin hoped it uh, would be due to the camera that needs to be soldered in. The frame is very tight and makes the chance of pinching a wire quite big. I'm a little bummed that Ishin didn't include a green wire to hook up smart audio. If we have to solder the cam in, another wire shouldn't be a problem. And the button is very in inaccessible, so smart audio is a good selling point. Overall I'm very positive about the quadcopter. For 109 US dollar, and with the coupon you'll find in the sheet linked in the description, it will be even cheaper. There are some nice features in here. The Cadex cam is promising. Possibility for smart audio is nice, and a 30 amp ESC in combination with 2206-2400 kV motors allows you to try almost any prop suitable for your flying style. So I'm going to fly this now and see what lipos and props will work on the ESC Tyro 109. Don't forget to check the sheet for all deals I could find. Thank you guys for watching, until next time.